Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to WWE 2K16. Now, first off, I appreciate all of you guys leaving comments as to what we're going to do with the superstar Marcus Prince's career, and I think I've decided what we're going to do. Now, hear me out. If we stay on the IC title reign, now let's check out the Hall of Fame here. That's really kind of what I'm shooting for. Um, we already have one sub goal. Now, to, from how I understand it, to get to the Hall of Fame, we need one sub goal and one main goal completed. And I already have one of the sub goals completed, which is beat a WWE alumni, The Rock, Sting, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, which I believe I have beaten a few of those. Now, of the main goals here, I think the most realistic would be to hold any title for 365 days. Now, I was thinking about doing that with the IC title. And while that would be kind of cool to travel in the footsteps of the Honky Tonk Man and have a very long Intercontinental Championship reign, I think we need to move on to bigger and better things. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to do a little bit of both of what I was talking about before in terms of what to do with Marcus. I am going to drop the IC title, probably just hand it off to Shamo or whoever the number one contender is, who is Goldust. I'm actually pleased with that. Hand the IC title over and then head over to the World Heavyweight Championship division and start working my way up there to a match with whoever the champion is at that time. Now, the reason Marcus is doing this is because he pinned the World Heavyweight Champion. He loves the IC gold, but I think World World Heavyweight Championship gold is going to be more Marcus's thing. That's, that more placates his ego. And once we win the World Heavyweight Championship, we are going to go for the CM Punk reign, guys. We're going to go for over a year of holding the World Heavyweight title. And then depending on, you know, how I feel and stuff going on, I may just go ahead and retire with that long title reign and enter the Hall of Fame. I am not sure, but we will just play it by ear. And during the 365 day reign, then I will um, do the thing where we only go into um, main storylines and, and things of that nature. Because the grind is always kind of interesting. So, World Heavyweight Championship bracket, let's see here. We've got Seth as World Champ, Big Show as number one contender, Daniel Bryan, Orton, Lesnar, Sheamus. Well, at least we're, we're going to have to we're going to have to bite the bullet and have at least a few matches with Sheamus, I would assume. Roman Reigns, Ambrose, Henry, Bray Wyatt, and Ryback. So that is an interesting grouping. And lose your place in any other rankings, start as number 10. Let's do it. And we lose the IC title. Who did it go to? It went to Goldust. Good. As long as it's not around Sheamus' waist, I'm okay. So we will back up. I like to think he won that match on Raw on Monday and on SmackDown did a promo where he was just like, you know what, I here, take this. I'm on to bigger things. Don't want to keep on beating the same people over and over. Speaking of beating the same people, we have got Roman Reigns. So this is a good way to start my climb win your match after your opponent does his signature on you easy so we just got to eat a superman punch and we should be in good shape and we can start a rivalry with anyone i think from what we've learned before from past rivalries we're probably going to let the rival choose us instead of us choose the rival Heck, starting a uh, rivalry with the Chosen One would probably be a interesting way to introduce myself to this bracket. But we'll see. Now, I wasn't able to watch Raw last night, guys. I had some personal stuff um, come up. But I do know that apparently Triple H is going to be fighting Ambrose in a match for the World Heavyweight title. Now, that's interesting up a lot of different possibilities we we can go the predictable course and assume that it's going to have triple h just batter ambrose but part of me is going to get the optimist optimist card up again and wonder what would actually happen if dean beat triple h and just surprised everyone just imagine that for the world heavyweight championship the crowd would go nuts. This is going to be in Chicago, I think it is. And that's always a very raucous crowd. 
and just imagine the pop of Dean Ambrose beating Triple H for the world title. That would be amazing. And I could see it in terms of the storyline with Dean uh, basically... Oh, man, he, Roman's actually getting the wrestling on today. Now let's see what I can actually do here because... Yeah, I've never been able to finish that part off. There's a royal shot for you, Roman. But imagine if Dean Ambrose is able to beat the odds and actually defeat Triple H for the World Heavyweight title. I just think about in in terms of compelling of compelling storytelling, this is what would happen. That Dean would win, the crowd would go nuts, and Roman Reigns would come out to congratulate his brother because his his brother did it. He beat Triple H. It's amazing. And then what I could see happening is Roman just all of a sudden swerving and beating the absolute crap out of Ambrose after his title celebration because Roman's been obsessed with getting this world heavyweight title back and all of a sudden out of the blue his best friend won it and that's the thing that would actually drive him heel because Ambrose got the title and not him after all the time that he had spent being bred for it and man Reigns is a reversing fool there's a drop kick for you Roman now he can hit you with all the stuff, all the things. And just imagine that for a main event. That could actually, like, uh, salvage the whole WrestleMania thing. Ambrose versus Reigns for the world title with uh, Reigns as a heel and Ambrose as the super face. Oh, it'd be so good. And that's probably not going to happen, though. Triple H is going to find some way to win. And don't get me wrong, I'm kind of okay with that. Not because of the potential of a lackluster main of, or event at WrestleMania, but because of I would like I like people who win titles to at least have a at least defend the title a little bit before they lose it, and that would be good to have Trips actually defend the title because he hasn't yet, and no one really wanted him to pull a Lesnar. Lesnar could Lesnar could pull that off. He was doing the old. 80s WWF champion thing and only defending it at the big pay-per-views. But Trips with a title defense under his belt builds momentum for him. So, we'll see what happens. The only other things I heard about were they wasted a perfectly good Undertaker appearance because Vince came out and did a promo and then Undertaker came out for his entrance said, said apparently like three words and, or not really three words, but he didn't say much and then just left. I saw a, an awesome comparison online and it was the equivalent to uh, Grandpa, Sis, or Grandpa Simpson walking into the um, burlesque house on the Simpsons, seeing Bart and Jen just walking out. <laughs> Very similar kind of thing. Now, oh, what are you doing there, Roman? Boy. So, perfect waste of The Undertaker, especially when they're having to fly him from Texas. Oh, I thought he was... That was a Superman punch. I need to remember that, too. I need to get hit with that. I like the heart punch versus Superman punch dynamic. And I think the matches are actually going to be harder now that we're in the World Heavyweight Bracket. My stats are actually going to start really coming into play here. Which is good. I like that. Uh, what else did I read um, of interest? Well, they announced the fabulous Freebirds into the Hall of Fame. And I was looking online, and that was my first mistake, and seeing a bunch of fans um, apparently give out about it, saying that the, you know, oh, who are these the Freebirds? People are running out of, or, you know, Vince is running out of people to put in the Hall of Fame. I'm sorry, guys. From someone who grew up in the Southwest United States, you have no idea how incredible the Freebird Von Erich feud was and it was awesome now can we if we knock him down I want to see if I can actually spear him oh no no I can't apparently I can go up on Brett's rope like a derp and leapfrog. There we go. Alright, there. We ate the Superman punch. 
Now he'll go for the pin. The authority is happy. We got a lot of heightened drama right there. But Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Buddy Roberts, and Michael Hayes were amazing heels. I mean, I kind of understand why they put Jimmy Garvin in. Jimmy Garvin was a really good heel um, in world class back in the day. And then he later became a free bird. But it, it's really good to see. The Freebird should have been in a long time ago, man. They they were actually, they were one of the best factions. And it was a three-man faction, which they didn't do a whole lot of. Came out to the rock and roll musical entrance. They had a lot of influence on professional wrestling in general. And a lot of casual fans don't, don't realize that, unfortunately. And I can't blame them. But they it's definitely well-deserved that they're going into the Hall of Fame. I was a big fan of Terry Bam Bam Gordy, especially when he was in Japan. His matches in Japan are awesome. He was a completely different animal in Japan. Well, most wrestlers are. Well, Roman has that finisher. We need to probably put this to bed. An elbow off of Brett's rope. I really don't want to eat the spear. That is... Not on my list of uh, things I want to do. Now I want to bring I want to bring to the attention that Roman did not lose a uh, yeah Roman did not lose oh I DDT'd him awesome he didn't lose a reversal when he did that crap yeah frustration Marcus I understand. I'll make it all better, Roman. Are we gonna see it? He had a full list of reversals, and he actually he reversed uh, one of my moves, and it didn't register that he'd reversed it. So I guess the difficulty is going to go up a little bit here. Not enough for me to lose, though. He's still Marcus Prince, after all. Let's see that again. I love the spear reversal. Ah, oh, that is so awesome. For DDT for good measure. And a four-star match with Roman. I think that's definitely earning a paycheck. Got 300 XP from the Authority. The Authority's probably very, very excited that Marcus has moved on to the World Heavyweight Championship division. Seth probably isn't, but... Please join me in welcoming my guest tonight. Hi, Renee. Let's talk about what happened out there tonight. Sure. Some would say you're showing a different side of yourself lately. Do you find that to be true? Yeah, this side doesn't have gold on it. I'm tired of being nice. I've never been nice. Of course. Isn't it obvious? About the but I guess we're just setting the tone for being, for being in this division being now. Nice guy did nothing for me. Because I, I remember when I was in the IC I'm title, I had to have a similar me. interview with that Renee. So I guess that's the computer thing, just the knowing, WWE okay, universe. this is how he's You'll going to play it while he's here. There you have it. Back to you, Cole. Speaking of Cole, to talk about... Um, at one point, I completely forgot it. I would really, really like to petition the folks at 2K um, for future WWE games to please get, I believe his name is Marco, oh, I, I forgot his name. He's the guy who, I, I want to say Marco Rubio, but I know that's not true. That's not correct. But he is the guy who does the commentary on SmackDown. For the love of God, please, please get him um, to do commentary for this game. I could actually stand listening to the commentary on the game and in uh, watching, actually watching the show. Because he, he he's a really good combination of a actual legitimate sports broadcaster and a storyteller, because I know that's what they really want. They want a storyteller. But he reminds me a lot of Jim Ross, just very different. Ooh, hello there, Dean. We're getting right into some of the really good competition now. But having him come in and actually call moves, that's the thing I really like is that he calls moves. Like all the moves he calls. Get your opponent's head health to red during your match. Oh, I can guarantee you that's going to happen. It's not going to affect Dean any, but 
we will go through two-thirds of the shield in this episode and prepare ourselves for the third, provided we don't get attacked. Finn versus Trips. I always like seeing what some of these other matches are. Okay. And entrances is off. But I think I think his name's Marco. Um, if you guys, I, I know a lot of people don't watch SmackDown anymore, but I would strongly I would strongly suggest that if you have the USA Network and you haven't watched SmackDown in a long time. Watch it, because with this guy on commentary, it is night and day. And, by the way, a heel Jerry the King Lawler on commentary. Imagine that. And they actually asked uh, Lawler why he went heel in commentary, and he actually had an amazing reply to it. It was very slick. He said, if three people are saying the same thing, you don't need three people. Or, or something to that effect. And I completely understand that, because if you, don't, if you have a three-person announce team... And even a two-person announced team, and they're saying the same things. There's really no, there's really no point in having that many people, because it's just stating the obvious over and over and over again, or just having that same point that Vince is saying in the headset drilled into you over and over and over. So, give it a shot if you guys can. Tell me, tell me what you think about him. There we go. I like that. Got to start this off good, and I can see Marcus in promos talking about, hey, I'm fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. The first thing that I did my first week here was beat two-thirds of the Shield. Where's the last third? Where's Seth Rollins? Where's my title? I really wish I could have been a pro wrestler. <laughs> uh, to tell you guys the truth, and I don't think I've said this in the series before, I actually have um, wrestled in matches before not and you probably think oh Rich has done backyard wrestling no it wasn't actually that it was a it was at a LARP event a long time ago and in a galaxy far far away when I was a lot more nimble a lot younger um they at, they were having professional wrestling at this LARP event and they only had a few people there that were actually um legit professionals like people who win the independent circuit so there wasn't going to be a whole lot of of wrestling on the show and what had happened is the guy who was organizing the event his name was jimmy he got the people who were fans of like some of the hardcore fans who thought that they could do it to go into the ring with these guys and see if they could pull off some kind of match and I jumped into the ring, and I, I'll never forget this, and it made me it made me very, very happy. Um, the guy, I forgot his name, he, he was a Latino guy, and he, he was pretty pretty good wrestler too, honestly. He said, okay, I want you to run the ropes and do a back bump and, and all this kind of stuff. So I did, and he looked at his partner like, not bad. It was just one of those things that you're kind, you, you've been waiting your entire life for it. So a bunch of the LARPers got matches together with their opponents, and um, it, don't get me wrong, a lot of it was amateur hour, but some of the stuff that people saw, we they would come up to us and say, that was actually some pretty good stuff. I, I did a jump off of Brett's rope, I did an elbow drop off of it, I fell out of the ring, I got to DDT and powerbomb people, it was, it was really, really fun. I really wish that I had the footage of that, I'd actually probably post it on the channel so people could see it. But it, the good thing was, it was actually in a ring, and there were no chairs or light fixtures or anything like that. It was just wrestling. And it's something that I really... I remember when I was a kid, um, I kept on telling uh, my dad that I wanted to be a pro wrestler. To which my dad was like, uh-huh, this is the, the police officer. Um, he saw that there was potential for it, but... There was some independent wrestling that was coming into um, our small town, and I don't even remember anyone over anyone who was there. But ooh, Ambrose is bleeding. Probably need to get the pin on him. Circle. There we go. I think if I just button mash, I'll actually be able to pin him. 
Awesome. That was exactly what I wanted to happen. Um, there was going to be a little training facility near my hometown that was being built. It fell through. Just when you're in a small town, you don't really get a whole lot of opportunities to kind of follow something that you... I, I think that if I had actually committed to it and did the amazing sacrifices that other people had done, I think I probably could have been decent. But I didn't. And now I can just be a fan and give out about it like everyone else can. But I, I have no regrets about that. It's a hard life, and I respect everyone who, who chooses to do it. Well, that was Dean taken care of. I actually really wasn't paying attention to the match, to tell you the truth. Next thing I know, his head was red, and he was down on the mat. Sorry, Dean. Your computer version is uh, not up to spec regarding the real deal. So that was our first week in the World Heavyweight Championship division, guys. Let's see what's going on here on Raw this coming week. And we have got... Drum roll. Wow. Okay. We've got Darren Young. That's... Uh, actually, we may find our rival here in this match. Normally, when I had to fight Titus O'Neil or Darren Young or something like that, I normally got attacked during my entrance. Let's see what the authority wants us. Two finishers during the match. I can pull that off. And we will see what happens in the next episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.